All right, URL structure and URL lengths. So a lot of people get this wrong, especially with, uh, with local websites. Now, on this website here, you can see the, the first click into the website, or zero clicks deep, um, we have wdsantabarber.com. If we scroll to services and we click on photography, you can see the sub path is web design services and then video and photography. This is a categorized URL structure. You can see we have a service categorized under services or you know placed under services and the services is placed under the main website. What you'll see a lot of the time is there will be no categorization on a website. So it'll just say, you know, WD Santa Barbara, video and photography. The problem with that is, first of all, search engines aren't going to understand where this is under. They're just going to go, oh, okay, video and photography. They're not going to know if that's a product. They're not going to know if it's a service. They're not going to know, you know, if it's a blog post. And so are the users. You know, a lot of people might not know how to look at a URL, but you know, some do, and they know, hey, I'm on video and the video and photography page under some of the services they offer. One way you can counterbalance this is if you have um, if you have a URL structure set up like this, and you don't want to change it, which you probably don't want to change this if you already have a ton of traffic. You can do breadcrumbs, and what breadcrumbs are is are these little things that you can place on a web page, and they tell you where you're at. Um, if your URL structure sucks. But um, ideally, if you don't have a lot of traffic going to your website, um, it might be a good idea to actually make sure that you are categorizing your URLs. However, if you are going to end up categorizing them, then you do want to make sure you do 301 redirects. Uh, if you don't know how to do all this stuff, it is in the phase one um, section of the template. So you can go watch those videos and, and find out how to actually uh, do all the redirects and do everything complicated and technical if you uh, if you want to end up changing up the whole architecture of your website. But most of the time, you don't have to change all the architecture in your website um, in order to rank well. And a lot of the times, you can actually really damage your website by doing that. But um, as far as the actual URLs go, you want your URLs to be about three to five words in depth per URL, per, per file path. So uh, for instance, I wouldn't want to have webdesignsantabarbara.com forward slash web dash design dash services dash 2020 dash uh, for dash people in dash Santa Santa dash Barbara that URL is way too long and Google apparently only reads the first three to five words per file path um, you also if possible want to add your keywords in your title tags as much as possible so if I wanted to rank for video and photography one thing I should have probably actually done with these URLs is typed in Santa Barbara at the end because now I can go for the keywords video and photography Santa Barbara. But that's kind of the basics. Um, again, if you want to learn how to actually change your URLs and, and how to how to kind of you know rework them if they're not if they're not doing well or if you if you're worried about having a bunch of uncategorized stuff on your website, check out the uh, the, the implementations in phase one.